hundreds of guitars, thousands of guitars, all uniquely different. But they all have one thing in common, and that's strings. Not only are strings an integral part of the guitar, they're the direct connection between you and your music. In fact, different tensions and gauges will not only change the tonal quality of your instrument, but they'll affect your playing style as well. And that's the reason that all these string sets exist. From gut to nylon, to steel to carbon alloy, to round wound and flat wound, to the latest high-tech polymer coated strings, there's a set that's ideal for every player. I thought I'd show you this one first, since it's the oldest and the most simplest of the guitars, and yet this is the one that gives most people most problems putting the strings on. Probably because you have to actually tie them on, as opposed to just passing them through a hole, as in most electric guitars and acoustic guitars. Again, there's many variations, but this is the generally accepted way of tying them on, um, with a few changes within it, if you just follow it through. I like to take two turns around once I've passed it through, Although one will work, the two gives me a feeling that, that I'm a little bit more secure. Once you've got it under itself twice, just take the slack up. The tighter the string goes, the more firm it holds itself. So once it's under okay. there, it's not going anywhere, especially once it's tensioned. And at this end, again, you have to physically tie it on um, for a little bit of extra security. I do it this way. I leave a, a couple of inches of slack and then just tie the little knot first. Just and a single knot. Huh? Just That's all it does. Again, as the string tensions up, it pulls on itself, and the more tension there is, the firmer it holds itself, so the string's not going to slide. One of the greatest inventions, the string winder, yeah. saves literally hours. And that's basically it, other than tuning it up to pitch. Nylon strings do tend to stretch a lot. Um, so the guitars tend to stay out of tune for a day or so until they settle down. But that's basically it on a classical guitar. This is very what simple. I love. Even you could do it. Even me. Even you. <laughs> Since we started with an acoustic, I'll pick up this one, which is the most popular acoustic, the dreadnought flat top um, steel string guitar. This attaches slightly different because the strings go through the bridge. Now these attach by the string going through the hole with a little ball end in there, just gets caught on the top of the guitar by the pin. It's not wedged in, as some people believe. The pin just stays in. The tension is what holds that little pin in. When you get to this end, this is when there's controversy on a steel string. Some people like to lock the string on to lose the risk of it slipping. I don't really feel it's necessary on the wound strings. As long as you've got about three turns on the capstan and then pass the string through, I found that that holds in all instances. The only time I will lock them on, and I'll show you how I do that when I get to a thinner string, is on the unwound strings. The first, the second, and sometimes the third on electric guitars. Um, for several reasons, I don't really know if it needs to lock it on, but I just find it physically easier. And again, bring it up to tension, that's it. The famous strap, 50 yes. years old and still going strong. Okay. Now, this one is very different from the others <coughs> in as much as the string comes in through the back of the guitar mm -hmm. and comes out the front. Now, when you get up this end on a fender, it gets much simpler. This is the capstan I'm going to be putting this string on. So I normally leave another couple of inches, about the distance of another two machine heads there, and then I cut it before I tension it, which is unlike the other guitars. Then this end just goes straight down into the hole, bend it through the little slot, and then just crank it up. It doesn't get any easier. I'll show you another string on this one, an unwound string. The reason I picked this is because fenders and strats have a problem that other guitars don't have, and the problem is at this end. And it's the distance from here to where it actually attaches. It's so long, and the string needs to be pulled down a little bit to stop it coming out the slot. Right. So they have these little string trees, and that works for the first string and the second string, because those are, both have a similar problem with that angle. 
Okay, now here we have the famous Les Paul. This one again is different from the other three. This has a separate tailpiece which comes off and gets lost if you're not careful. And this has the holes that the string goes through okay. and the two little open-ended bits. It's the string tension alone that actually holds this piece on. And I've got all the strings on there and this just hooks onto there. And it will hold itself in as soon as I've got one string on. I'll go to the first string since it's an unwound one. I pass it through the hole in the capstan first. And then I give myself an inch, inch and a half, and just tension it a little bit. Then I take the loose end and pass it under itself, mm -hmm. back towards the, the far end of the guitar. Once it's under there, I just pull out the slack and then pass it back. I keep the tension on it with my hand the best I can. As it gets tension, it just holds itself down so it can't possibly come undone. The thin ones tend to be slippery. Again, once it's up to tension, just double check it's sitting on the saddle, cut off the excess, and um, there you go. So I thought I really knew a lot about stringing guitars, but must admit I learned some new things from Glenn today which just goes to show that there's always something new to discover about the guitar. But one thing's for sure, you'll see it all here on Guitar Universe. Dave, on our next episode, former Marilyn Manson, Katie Lang, and David Lee Roth guitarist John Five will tell us just what it's like to play metal guitar behind the legendary Les Paul. Awesome. We'll also visit the Seymour Duncan factory to find out everything you wanted to know about pickups and how they're made. And we'll learn all about one of the first and most essential of guitar pedals, the wah-wah, as we check in with wah fanatic Sean Cummings and take a look at his historic collection. All on our next episode of Guitar Universe.